Hi everyone. So let's start the class today. So just to recall what we did in the previous class, we had talked about, I had introduced you to the concepts of cohesion and coupling, right? I told you what exactly is cohesion and what exactly is coupling. I also discussed functional independence, right? How you know a low coupling is helpful for the design. That means if I have you know modules of my system and if they are very loosely coupled that means uh, they have a very low coupling that means the attraction between different modules right are very low that means it's good for a design because we achieve something called as functional independence that means when we are going to implement one of the modules we don't have to rely or depend on the other one right i also told you that there's no way to find out what exactly is uh, you know how kind of it, there's no there's no way to find or quantify whether my design is good or bad but there are ways by which I can find out what is the degree of cohesion and coupling in my design so <clears throat> in the previous class I had told you about the different types of coupling and different types of cohesion so today we will take up one by one so if you look at the screen right now I have listed down all the different types of cohesion that we had actually discussed in the previous class but we will go through each one of them today in detail and I had also told you about the degree of cohesion which means that if you have a coincidental cohesion in your design it means that your design has got very low cohesion which means it's not good right so what we need to strive is we need to strive for a functional cohesion and a data coupling that means if you have lots of data coupling between your modules it's good for your design if you have functional or sequential or communicational cohesion in your modules then it's good for your design so let's discuss each one of them today and see exactly what they mean okay so the first thing is let's talk about coincidental cohesion so as the word you know signifies let's change the color yeah so first one we're going to talk is coincidental okay coincidental cohesion okay now if your module right consists of functions or consists of requirements or consists of a set of tasks which relate to each other very loosely like what we are talking about is a module inside which there are lots of tasks or requirements or functions and if they relate to each other very loosely that means the attraction between them is very weak right then this kind of cohesion within a module module is called as coincidental cohesion so basically what happens the module contains a random collection of functions okay it consists of random collection of functions so each of these functionalities that we have here they are all random that means we have put all these inside a module without okay without any logic or you know thought or design that means we have just randomly put these what you call requirements together inside a module okay now this is not good because when you are trying to make a good design we need to you know kind of think about all these sub requirements we need to think about all the you know sub functionalities which are inside the module and then we need to group them so if you realize now if you you would have probably realized by now that if we do our SRS well that means if we group our requirements properly in an SRS document then automatically we can avoid this coincidental cohesion okay so coinci coincidental cohesion can be avoided if you I mean in fact all the you know kind of uh, cohesion that we are going to discuss right now right everything is related to an SRS so if you do your SRS well your design will automatically come out really well that means your design your modules will have high cohesion if your SRS has been written and structured well okay so the second form of cohesion that we're going to talk about is logical okay logical cohesion now what happens in logical cohesion now in this case 
all the elements of the module that means all the functionalities inside a module they perform similar operations okay similar operations what do we mean for example like uh, say there is this module and all the sub functionalities or the functionalities inside the module they you know kind of do activities which are similar for example they kind of do error handling or they accept data input from the user or they you know uh, there is a data output activity that they are performing for example you know this you know an example of logical cohesion can also be like for example a set of print functions to generate an output report right uh, so basically if you have a module which you have dedicated it to perform you know a certain activity which are similar in nature for example printing out a report or handling errors or you know uh, doing the data input output then such kind of you know module are said to have logical cohesion so the important thing to understand in case of a logical cohesion is that all the elements of the module perform similar operations input output data error handling you know some all of them will perform similar operations so if you have similar operations and if you put down all the functions you know which perform similar operations into your module then that module is supposed to have logical cohesion now the third type of cohesion that we'll discuss is the temporal now temporal r a l yeah now the temporal cohesion in this case what will happen is the temporal is connected with time okay so in case of temporal cohesion right the module will contain tasks that are related by the fact that all the tasks must be executed in the same time span all right so if you have a module where you have tasks and all the tasks must be executed in the same time span right then you can say that that particular module exhibits temporal cohesion all right now for example there are uh, what could be the example of uh, you know tasks being executed in the same time span for example if you have some set of functions right which are responsible for initializing or starting up or shutting down some of the processes right these are all related to time initialization of the server initialization of some module initialization of some program these are all related to time for example startup shutdown so if you have any functionality which consists of you know functions which are related to time which must be executed in the same time span okay then that module is said to exhibit a temporal cohesion just remember that temporal is connected with time the next is procedural procedural cohesion procedure now when we talk about procedural cohesion right procedure you know that procedure means what it means that it's a kind of a, you know uh, if you say what's a procedure we can call it as an algorithm also like a procedure is basically a you know a step of you know activities to implement something right we can talk of a procedure as an algorithm so if you have a module which consists of functions or functionalities which are a part of a procedure or an algorithm okay then such kind of module is said to have procedural cohesion for example in this case what happens is there will be certain sequence of steps they have to be carried out in a certain order for achieving an objective for example if you have an algorithm for decoding a message then there will be certain sequence of steps right so each one of those steps will be uh, ordered that means if you want to implement an algorithm then all the steps which are there need to be executed in a particular sequence or an order so if you have a module which is used or the sub requirements or the functions in that module are implementing a particular algorithm or a procedure then such kind of uh, what you call cohesion is said to be procedural cohesion and the module is said to possess procedural cohesion now is it good bad yes i mean if you talk about temporal and if you talk about you know what you call the coincidental and logical the procedural cohesion is much better than that because the degree of cohesion you know the degree of procedural cohesion is higher than temporal or logical or coincidental so as we discuss you know the 
types of cohesion it's getting better and better <coughs> okay so let's talk about the next cohesion that we have and that is communicational is communicational cohesion okay now this is important because if you have a module and there are lots of functionalities inside this module now in case of communicational cohesion all the functions of these modules right reference or update the same data structure for example if I have a data structure it could be a stack it could be a queue it could be a table in the database or anything for that matter and if I have requirements or functionalities here which go and make changes in the same data structure okay then this kind of module is said to have communicational cohesion for example if you have a set of functions and these functions are defined on an array that means all these functions operate on one array so here is my array or you know for example a stack or a linked list or any of the data structures so if all these functions are basically used to you know kind of uh, refer to the same data structure then we can say that this particular module has communicational cohesion for example if you are <coughs> implementing a stack operation so you have push pop peep there are different kinds of functionalities connected with stack operations right so if you have one module which which consists of all the operations of stack that means push pop peep all these operations right can be will be performed on the same data structure so if you have a module consisting of all these functionalities then we can say that that module you know has communicational cohesion okay the next is sequential The next is sequential <coughs> now in case of sequential cohesion what happens is the elements of the modules that means all the different elements or the functionalities of the module right so all of these okay they form different parts of a sequence now what I'm trying to say is that output of one so say that this is one functionality the output of this functionality will be used as an input to the another one okay similarly the output of this will be used as an input in another one for example if you have if you are implementing a functionality here in such a way that first you have to do a sort so whatever is the output of sort you will actually then perform a search function and after your search function is implemented then you go ahead and prepare a display function so if you look at this three requirements and if all these three are part of one module right wherein the output of one is going as an input to another function and the output of that function is going as an input to another function so if your requirements are such that output of one is going into the input of another then such kind of cohesion is called a sequential cohesion and this is good okay so these are you know when we're talking about communicational or sequential cohesion they are good because they bring about high cohesiveness to your design so your you know what you call your uh, design should have sequential communicational functional cohesion these are you know cohesions these are types of cohesions which increase your cohesiveness or ha you know increase your the bonding between the different uh, functions inside a module and high cohesion is good for our design okay so this is what is sequential uh, sorry it's not communication here it's sequential cohesion okay my mistake all right so last one and what we have is functional cohesion and this is the cohesion we should try and achieve functional cohesion now in case of functional cohesion the different elements of your module they cooperate with each other they cooperate with each other to achieve a single function to achieve a single function okay for example managing an employees payroll so managing an employees payroll can be a single function 
right and all these different you know functionalities or the elements inside a module will work together to implement that particular functionality okay so the whole objective is that all the functionalities inside a particular given module will work together to achieve a single functionality for example managing an employee's payroll or you know checking the attendance of a student right now when a module displays functional cohesion we can describe the function using a single sentence that means if this module represents a functional cohesion then we can describe the functionality of the entire module by just a single sentence that means this module implements one functionality okay like employee payroll management okay so that is one functionality so if you have functional cohesion that means all the different tasks or requirements or functions you know inside a particular module will work together to implement just one functionality and this is basically what functional cohesion is and this is what we should try to achieve so it's not a hard and a fast rule that you know we can achieve functional cohesion all the time right we just can't have a module which has functional cohesion all the time so our module may have a mix of different types of cohesion so if you look at this <coughs> slide here there are so many different kinds of cohesion here there could be a scenario that i have to put a temporal cohesion right but our focus would be to try and you know have all our modules within these three different types of cohesion functional sequential and communicational one or two you can have temporal but just try and understand that when you have temporal logical or coincidental right that means your degree of cohesion is becoming like low that means your cohesion is becoming low which is not good okay so how can we determine cohesiveness that's the next question so write down a sentence write down a sentence to describe the function of a module so for example how do i determine cohesiveness okay so let me just change here so how do we determine how can i find out that what is the cohesiveness in a particular requirement okay so write down a sentence to describe the function of a module so if you have a module here right write down the sentence to describe the function of this module and if the sentence is compound whatever sentence you write that means this and this and this and this right for example if the sentence is compound compound sentences means and 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 you have sentences with and right if the sentence is compound that means you have sequential or communicational cohesion so that's one way to identify what kind of cohesion you have so if your sentence is compound then this particular module has sequential or communicational cohesion all right so that's one way of identifying sequential or communicational cohesion next suppose if your sentence has words okay like uh, say first or next if your sentence has got words like first next after then for example then you know these kind of words then this has got you can say that this particular uh, what you call the module has sequential or you can say temporal that this module can have se uh, sequential or temporal cohesion but if you if your module has got words like if you can if you write a sentence for that module and if your word uh, module has words like initialize then in this case it's a clear case of temporal cohesion because initialize means it's uh, you know related to time so this is temporal cohesion now whatever i have mentioned here is not a hard and a fast rule okay this is not a hard and a fast rule that you know uh, but this is just one cursory way of looking at your module to find out what degree of cohesion it has 
okay so i think uh, we can you know <coughs> continue with the coupling in the next class but it's important to understand that you know what is cohesion because let me just uh, go through what i have taught you so what i have taught you about cohesion and coupling is important what is important is that a design should have high cohesion and low coupling how can you achieve high cohesion so i can achieve high cohesion if my modules exhibit functional sequential and communicational cohesion so what exactly are these three types of cohesion right because these three have the highest degree of cohesion so how can we you know achieve a high degree of cohesion our module should exhibit functional sequential or communicational cohesion so what exactly they are so we have discussed that right now okay functional cohesion is when you have all the sub requirements inside a particular module which achieve a single function similarly communicational cohesion means there is a sequence right so the output of one functionality will be used as an input of another right and procedural cohesion cohesion means that all the functionalities inside that particular model uh, a module will be implementing a particular algorithm so these are the three types of cohesion we should try and achieve in our modules but it's not a hard and a fast rule you may have temporal it, it, it may be a necessity that we must uh, we may have a module which exhibits temporal exhibits temporal cohesion and that's fine okay so just go through uh, this once again because this is important and this is also going to be a part of your mid semester exam so in the next class i will continue with the different types of coupling and that will be the end of this chapter and then we will move on to the actual design techniques there are two different ways of design of designing one is structured oriented design the structure structured analysis and design and the other one is your object oriented analysis and design and those two are going to be your main chapter of your design so till we meet again the next class see you bye